The door right. turn off the phone lines. We are live. Well, uh, here's the other one. What are we, what do you want right there? YouTube. Oh. Is this Periscope? So she's just bit she's just videoing. <laughs> oh, she phone. hasn't started yet. I haven't started okay. yet. Is this Periscope? Periscope, yeah. Okay. You're on Periscope. Yeah. And then That's um, Periscope, that's YouTube, so you gotta is hold this it. recording right now. Yes. yes. Can yeah. you edit it? Yeah, you don't need to. Just really run it. It's fine. I mean we're not Anything cray cray right now? There's cray cray. <laughs> this is cray cray. Hi cray cray. <laughs> did y'all press? Somebody said, did y'all press the button today? I'm looking forward to this presentation. <laughs> Ooh, don't. Oh, here it is. All right. Describe your love. Episode. Two. What's up, guys? Be with you in just a second. Episode two, Ask the Insurance Guy Online. Hold on. Can you tell how many people are watching? I don't worry about that. <laughs> I just didn't know. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, getting, you, you probably could, and then that, and then that would make me nervous. Not a blooper today. You hear me? <laughs> I'm not the butt of blooper. your guys' jokes. It ain't happening. No, I just said anything. Mm-hmm. Don't forget when you start, you gotta press the red button. On my phone. There's a copy here, so I'll punch you later. <laughs> Phil, we are live. I have got 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 turn. Something down here. Mm -mm. I don't know what that is, but it sounds pretty. It does sound pretty. I believe you're live. Check and make sure. Yeah, there's two people watching. <laughs> two peeps! Debbie. We pressed the button today. Hey guys, this is Scott Howell, theinsuranceguyonline.com, and you are watching episode number two, number two, of Ask the Insurance Guy Online. Thank everybody for coming today. Um, I have a special guest star with me today, and I want to introduce him now. His name is Officer McWhorter. Uh, you mind if I call you Mac? No, call okay. me. Mac is with us today. And let me tell you, let me tell you a little bit about the onus behind this episode. Back um, during Christmas, I noticed that on Facebook there were a ton of people that, for Christmas presents, had gotten firearms. And a lot of lot of women. I probably had ten or fifteen Facebook friends who got a pistol for Christmas. And I know in the state of Alabama, it seems like, and maybe you can you can confirm or deny this. There are a lot of people now, including myself, that are carrying a concealed firearm. That's true. And so I wanted to do a video today. Don't worry about it. Just let it go. We'll get it in a minute. Um, we, I wanted to do a video, and I have been for some time, about you know insurance and firearms because we do from time to time get somebody that calls and says, um, you know, had my gun stolen out of my truck. What do I do? Who do I need to call? What needs to happen? And I also wanted to talk to a lot of these people who are concealed carrying. Um, and if you don't mind, I've got one on me right now. I'm going to put it, just lay it right here. I'm not going to do anything. And, and uh, show everybody. So this is a Galco ankle holster with a Glock 43 um, that I conceal carry right there. Now, let me say this. Before we get started, we live in the state of Alabama. So the laws that we talk about today, Mac and I are going to be talking about, pertain to the state of Alabama. They don't pertain to Tennessee, to Georgia, to Mississippi, to, you know, uh, Rome, Georgia, or Rome overseas. They pertain to us here. Just wanted to throw that out there. But um, I had a lot of things I wanted to ask you today because, and, and let, me, let me say this. 
the purpose of these episodes, I want to bring in thought leaders, athletes. I want to talk about in, things that interest me and I think will interest them and uh, get answers to questions that maybe I don't know about. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Scott Howell. I'm a nationwide insurance agent. I have offices in Athens, Madison, Florence, Alabama. I served four years in the United States Marine Corps. Um, and I don't know that Mac even knows this, but I served my first two years with, with an anti-terrorism security forces unit. Um, we did uh, security forces um, uh, work in London, England. And then I was with 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines in uh, San Clemente, California as part of the Fleet Marine Force. And during my time in London, I actually had the opportunity to go through British Royal Marine Boot Camp as part of something called the All Arms Commando course that, that I was uh, chosen to do while I was over there. So I've gotten to do some, some really cool stuff. So, um, you know, my military experience though was a long time ago. And you, you know, I, I probably have forgotten a lot of what I actually learned. So I'm not gonna be sitting here saying that, you know. Wants to. Yeah, exactly. So, so let's get started. I wanna ask some questions. I wanna hear from some of you guys and ask, you know, answer some questions from you. I think my first question for you would be, um, so you've gotten a handgun, you've decided to conceal carry, um, and you're, you, you've gotten your weapon, you're driving down the road, you get pulled over by a police officer. Okay. What do we do? The smart thing to do, and what you're legally, in the state of Alabama, bound by law to do is notify the police officer, state trooper, uh, sheriff's deputy, whatever the case may be, you're bound by law to notify him that you are armed and you're a licensed, uh, licensed concealed carry holder. Uh, smart thing to do is don't try to show us your gun. <laughs> All right, simply tell us, hey, officer or deputy, trooper, I'm armed. I do have a permit. Here's my permit. The question you'll most likely get next from us is going to be, where is the gun located? Right. Um, again, don't try to show us. Don't pull it out and say it's right here. We don't want to see it. We just want to know that Keep you talking. have it. I want to show them something to you while you're talking. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, so, you know, that's the smart thing for us to do. Nine times out of ten, we are not going to ask you for your gun uh, to check it, the serial numbers on it or anything like that. We just want to know that we are dealing with an armed citizen. It helps us to know, number one, that we're dealing with normally a law-abiding citizen if they are a concealed carry holder, and, and that's very beneficial to us. Uh, to me, it's comforting to know that there are armed citizens out there. I like that. Um, and armed citizens, please be aware that if we ever need you, we would appreciate the help. So, you're about, to, you're uh, about to walk into my next question. Okay. So let's, let's go there. This is this is my concealed carry permit. Okay. Um, and, and let me say this, because you, you just said something that is the reason I can still carry. I was at my son's school one day. He's a, he's a third grader, about to be a fourth grader at, in Huntsville. And I had a conversation with a resource officer that was a police, Huntsville PD guy, and he's been there all year. And we started talking. And, he, and we started talking about concealed carry and my time in the military. And he looked at me dead in my face and he goes, I would really appreciate it if you would start concealed carrying. And I was like, damn, that right. guy just asked me if I would conceal carry. How long since you've been out of the Marines? Uh, it's been a long time. What took you so long? Exactly. <laughs> so, 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 and, and you know, there's that, there's always that yin and, yin and yang of, right. you know, do I do it or not do it? Sure. But when he did that, it was, it spoke, to, uh, it, it, he looked me in my face and he did that. I thought, you know, here, here's a police officer basically asking me to do this. And, and then, and then it was almost like serendipity literally two weeks later there was an incident that happened in my hometown and I, I don't want to talk about it because there's going to be some people watching this that were involved in it but it hit very very close to home and when that happened it was like oh hell no i'm 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 about to start concealed carry so so what i have done is i start i've started going to the pistol range about once a month just to um you know Kind of, kind of make sure I understand that if I need to use this, you know, how, you know, how am I, how, how does it shoot? Um, you know, how do I, how do I get it out quickly and all, all that good stuff that you really need to do to, um, you know, to familiarize yourself with a gun. That's also a responsibility. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're carrying a concealed weapon and you don't know how to operate it, you can't get it out quickly. Uh, you haven't 
don't have any experience in threat assessment, it's better that you don't yeah. um, because it's a responsibility issue, just like owning one and keeping it in your home if you have children, right? There's, the responsibility goes back to the parent, to the adult, to make sure uh, in the home that it's up and out of the way, that the kids can't get to it, um, and as a concealed carry holder, that you do know how to responsibly use your firearm and uh, when it's appropriate and when it's not appropriate. So. Right. So, so here's, I'm going to go back to, but first before I go forward, I'm going to go backwards. So you walk up on me and I have my hands on the steering wheel. Yes, sir. When should I say I have a concealed a concealed handgun, you know, on my person right now? When when are you going to ask me or should I say that before you ask me? No, you should you should let us know. Okay. Um, and basically the thing is, you know, whenever we do a, a vehicle stop, traffic stop or anything like that, um, and we approach the driver, you know, it's usually, how you doing today? Mm -hmm. Something along those lines. Uh, hopefully it's nice like that, right? not right. angry. Um, and that's a good time to let us know. Yes, sir, uh, how are you doing today? Um, I am a concealed carry holder and mm -hmm. I have a firearm on my person or in my vehicle. Okay. So next question. Um, let's say worst possible scenario happens. I'm in my truck, I live a mile from my son's school something happens, there's an active shooter at his school. I can get there in probably, you know, a minute, minute and a half. But I, I'm a citizen, I'm not a police officer, and I'm going to assume that if that, if that happens, the, you guys are gonna know about it way before I know about it because it's coming over on the, on the police scanner. But if for some reason I did know about it, um, or, or like you're somewhere and some, a shooting or, or something occurs and, and you feel like you need to be involved, what, what is the responsibility of the citizen to make the police know that, hey, I'm not the guy, I'm not the bad guy, I'm the good guy? Do you see what I'm saying? I do. I do. Let me first touch on the active shooter situation. If you have an active shooter in a business, in a school, um, any public building, Walmart, Publix, whatever, and you are a legally armed citizen, the best thing you can do is get down, take cover, all right? Don't brandish your firearm unless you, unless the threat is approaching you. Um, because for the police officers and, and everybody else responding, um, and you're gonna have everybody from four corners of the earth uh, mm -hmm. coming in on that scene, is if you're holding a gun, you're probably a bad guy. Right. So what you wanna do is keep your gun uh, holstered if you can't, or, or concealed, and take cover, cover up your family, protect right. them, keep them safe, and uh, do not brandish your firearm and go after the shooter because if you're moving through that business, that school, that residence, or whatever with a firearm, and you are not clearly identified as a law enforcement officer, uh, things go south quickly. Um, if you hear over the scanner or whatever that there's something going on at the school, the best thing you can do is Stay by your phone and wait for contact from the school. Do not go to that school. All right, let the police deal with that. Um, we will try to set off, cordon off the area so that uh, nobody comes in, nobody goes out. So as a legally armed citizen, your best bet is just to stay back, stay out of the fray, and let us do our jobs. Okay. Um, well, the yeah. second part of the question is if, if you are somewhere and something bad's happening, if you're at a restaurant eating with your family or whatever, again, the best way to win a fight is not to get in a fight. So mm. if you can get out, get out. Uh, right. If you can get out the back door, if you can get out the front door, whatever the case may be, break contact with the fight. That way nobody in your family gets injured. Um, next thing, if you do have to brandish your weapon, ensure you're prepared to use it and you know how it operates. Correct. Um, do not want, I mean, if you pull out a gun and you're one of those people that doesn't carry around in the chamber and you pull your gun out and point it and there's not a round in the chamber, you're, you're a target, all right? so. Uh, whoever's in there being the bad guy is going to mm -hmm. gonna be looking at you. And that brings me to another point of open carry. State of Alabama, we have open carry laws. Um, my opinion, and this is just my opinion, not a good idea. So if you're, if you're a legit law-abiding citizen, go pay the $15 a year, $20 a year to get a concealed carry permit. The one thing I will say, and I, you, you and I talk, touched on this yesterday when we talked on the phone, I think, for just a second. But I wanted to kind of save this for this talk. I agree, I agree wholeheartedly with you. Um, I think if, if nothing else, and I'll, I'll give you an example. About six months ago, I was in Walmart, and a, a young kid, I, I don't know how old he was, he, maybe 20, 20, 21, 22, something, I don't, I don't know how old he was. He was open carrying a, a firearm. And I remember thinking, you know, 
I just knew from the people standing around that could see him that it was making a lot of people uncomfortable. Right. And now, he probably didn't recognize that. I don't know whether he had enough self-awareness to realize that, or maybe he wanted that. Maybe he wanted people to to know that, you know, I, I, you know, I've got a firearm, so don't mess with me kind of thing. But I just remember thinking, what? that's not necessary. And I know a lot of people don't like to carry inside waistband because... You know, the biggest thing you hear is, you know, it's uncomfortable. Um, my suggestion there would be to buy a pair of pants, maybe one size bigger. Size bigger. So, <laughs> yeah, so, so that, so that you know, now I carry ankle, and the reason I carry ankle is that nobody knows I have it. Right. And in the, in the business that I'm in, I'm constantly meeting with, with people, and I just, I don't want to give anybody, I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. So, so I just choose to carry it on my ankle because it's so, it, you just can't tell unless... Right unless my pants come up high enough for you to see them. But, um, yeah, that, 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 is, that is tremendously good information. Um, and I, am, I, I just can't tell you how much respect I have for what you do. I have a lot of friends that are, that are EMTs, that are firefighters, and, and just I have so much respect for what you guys do. I appreciate that. Um, so let me, let me ask you another question. Okay. You're at home. Somebody... You walk out into your garage, it's 10, 11 o'clock at night, one o'clock in the morning, whatever time it is, and somebody is in your garage stealing your golf clubs. You have a loaded rifle in the garage. That person or those people take off running. Um, what what do you do in that scenario? Best best to just notify the police. If you've got a loaded rifle, pick it up, secure it. Is there a need to shoot at somebody for stealing your golf clubs? My answer to that is no. Is no yeah. um, the only time you should really consider um, deadly force is when you are encountered with deadly mm -hmm. force. If somebody's stealing your golf clubs, uh, you could be criminally and civilly, civilly liable uh, if you shot them, especially if they were moving away. Now, flip side of that is they get a golf club out of their bag and they come at you, you would be, in my opinion, perfectly justified to engage that person. Mm -hmm. and take a shot so I, I know an insurance carrier that had a claim very similar to that a uh, person was shot in the neighbor's yard you know the guy picked up a rifle he was mad he had a loaded rifle in the garage picked it up shot the guy and that person's family filed a claim through the insurance carrier and that claim was denied because it, you know it, it, it was it was not an immediate threat right. and, and, and you know like you said, should you really be picking up a loaded rifle and shooting somebody when they're running off of your golf clubs? I mean, golf clubs are stuff. Yeah, my life is something you can't get back. So, so that brings me to my next question. I have lots of questions today. Okay. So, two o'clock in the morning, I've I've heard of this happening to people before. Somebody gets intoxicated, they get high. They're at somebody's house, two or three doors down. They get disoriented. They're they're trying to get back to that house, but somehow they end up on your front door. You know, they're, they're beating the door, you know, it's late, you're scared, because cause nothing ever happens good when you're, somebody seems right. like, when somebody's beating on your door at 2 o'clock in the morning. So, so tell us, you know, in that situation, you know, you hear these stories about people shooting through the door and killing somebody who ends up not, you know, maybe not being um, an actual robber or maybe, but, but they didn't know, you know, they didn't know. So so what is your suggestion there? What, what do you think those folks should do in that situation? If you're the person inside the house that's maybe holding a firearm and, 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 and there's somebody on the other side of the door. Okay, well, uh, and with that, there's four four cardinal safety rules, and we'll go over those if you want to in a little bit. One is never point your, your weapon at anything you're not willing to kill or destroy. Um, that's one of, the, one of the cardinal rules to live by. Um, somebody's outside beating on your door, can you justify being in fear for your life at that point? Best thing to do, call the police, sheriff's department, whatever is in your area of jurisdiction or the area you live in, whoever has jurisdiction. Um, let them know your address, number one. Speak clearly, speak slowly on the phone to your dispatchers or your 911 center. So don't be frantic. If you're frantic, your mind races 100 miles an hour. It often outruns your mouth, so you have a lot of gibberish coming out. Call the law enforcement agency in your area, report your address and what's going on, notify them that you are armed and inside the residence. 
stay inside the residence. Do mm -hmm. not shoot through. You don't know if your life is in danger or not. Now, if that person comes through the door and approaches you in an aggressive manner, you have the right to stand your ground. But until that happens, if they're just beating on your door and causing a ruckus, let law enforcement take care of it. Okay? Now, uh, that's that a good enough answer? That's a very good answer. All right. Yeah, that's a very good answer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you some questions off that topic for just a second. Okay. What are you seeing? What's the future of law enforcement right now? In terms of, of, of is there any cool new weapons out there that, that most folks don't know about or anything? Yeah, there's always G Wiz gadgets out there that uh, that everybody wants. Uh, problem in in a lot of law enforcement agencies, especially in the South, because you know we're not uh, not a whole lot of capital. Uh, right. And some of the smaller agencies, especially, is G Wiz gadgets cost a lot of money, uh, and money doesn't grow on trees. I know through our agency, we have to get approval through our city council as well as our right. department before we buy anything. Um, a lot of grants out there. Um, I would encourage smaller departments to, to look into the grant system and, and try to use it. Um, you know, I think you can't replace. Uh, Boots on the ground, for, for lack of a better term. You know, right. guys riding around in cars, looking at, at what's right and what's wrong, and, and uh, trying to take care of business that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's always there's always new training techniques and procedures and everything else that come out that, that make us a little sharper. Uh, we all started wearing, and our agency started wearing the body cams, which but that's that was going to be my next have, question. Uh, everybody said, "Well, I don't want to wear those things." You know, if I if I get mad and right. cuss in the car, then right. they're going to catch it and everything. What you know what? And right. Tell me who don't get mad and cuss in their car. Exactly. So, um, thing is, is you know, and citizens bring you know complaints all the time. People just don't like that they were doing wrong. Right. And, uh, so whenever they get told they're doing wrong by the police, they like to call the supervisors and complain. And believe it or not, these have gotten us out of more complaints than mm -hmm. they've gotten us into. Right. So and, and so we're pretty happy with them. We like them. Uh, they great audio, great video. Yeah. Um, oh, hold on. Hey, right back. Sure. Hey, y'all bear with me just a second. I gotta grab this phone. Persistent person. Y'all do selfies while I'm away. <laughs> or, or do each other. No, don't do any. It's Toby. Look at her go. She's got two phones. Someone commented on here and said, um, perhaps you should hold your phone the other way, your sideways, but I can't hold it the other way because then I wouldn't be able to fit both of them in it. Can you tell me how, how many viewers you have now? Um, right now we have seven. Good. It got up to ten at one point, but I guess some people dropped off. That's probably my fault. My apologies. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> the world we live in, guys. Got to answer phone calls. All right. Um. So that brings me to my next question. Next question, sir. Sure. Um, we went over the body cam. Um, I want to talk just a second about insurance and guns. I spoke to a friend of mine that is a property claims guy. He's a manager this morning uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. And one of the things, and I told him I wanted this to be one of the things we talked about today, one of the things that, that, that we're seeing in the insurance industry is people, specifically men, with newer model pickup trucks, 14s, 15s, 16s, thieves are targeting those newer model trucks because, especially in Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, Mississippi, a lot of those guys have weapons in their trucks. Right. So, is and, and I never thought of that. I never thought of, hey, if, if, if you got a brand new Silverado or Ford F-150, you know, you might want to make sure you don't have your, your, gun, your guns inside the truck. So right. what are your thoughts on that? Anyway? My thoughts on that are if you're a concealed carry holder, you should have your weapon with you. If you're carrying it that day, it needs to be on your person. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that it was just the trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of reports of... Um, all different types of vehicles people break into them if you're going to carry a gun remember this it's a responsibility thing you're responsible for that weapon and everything that weapon can do um, so if that weapon you leave it in your vehicle it's 
my opinion, is, again, it's not a good idea, and it gets stolen, you need to immediately report it to us so that we can get the information out to other agencies, and, and uh, we have a, a, a national crime information center that we will record the, the make, model, and serial number in, and um, that gun will be report stolen. Now, again, if you're going to carry it, keep it with you. All right, you have a concealed carry permit. You are able to carry just about anywhere you want to. Okay, and there are some restrictions on that. And uh, you know, it's courthouses, police stations, sheriff's departments, um, schools, stuff like that. And you can find that in the Code of Alabama. If you'll just Google Code of Alabama, 1975, mm -hmm. um, and it has all the updates. And there's the the title that you want to look for is 13A11-80. Okay. 13A1180, and you can pull that up, and it can tell it will tell you. Uh, where you're allowed to carry, uh, how you go about getting a permit, it'll tell you other state, well, I don't believe it lists the other states that we have reciprocity agreements mm -hmm. with in the state of Alabama, but uh, at last count it was 24 states that have reciprocity. Uh, so in other words, if I'm a concealed carry holder in Alabama and I travel to Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, um, my permit from Alabama is recognized in all those states. I did not know that. Like I said, there's, I think, 23 or 24. I, did I think with that. Alabama included, there's 24 states that have reciprocity. Um, so, but, but again, uh, Google Code of Alabama, Title uh, 13A, 1180, and it outlines how you go about carrying a concealed weapon or how you go about obtaining a concealed carry permit and where you are allowed to and not allowed to carry it. Okay. That's, that's some good information. I didn't know any. I didn't know that. So, um, questions. Do we do we have any do we have any questions today? Yes. Uh, Steve from Arab asks, if I had my gun stolen out of my truck, what do I need to do to report it? Okay. What do you need? Okay. So I'm going to repeat the question uh, that my beautiful assistant has just given me. So. If you get a gun stolen out of your truck, what do you do to report it? Well, he, he just answered that question. The first thing you need to do, call the police, report the gun stolen. Hopefully you have, you know, the serial number and all that that you can give you guys to. If you don't, that's probably a problem, correct? If, it if, makes it more difficult. It makes it harder for, harder for us to find your gun. If we stop right. somebody who doesn't have a permit and we run the serial number, if you haven't reported it stolen with the serial number, we have no idea. If, what was that, that person? What was that person's name? Steve. Steve, let's talk insurance and guns for just a moment, okay? So, if you have a homeowner's insurance policy, your policy carries special limits of liability for, I believe it's like ten or eleven different things: jewelry, furs, guns, computers. Uh, what else, Athena? Jewelry, guns, money. Those particular items have a, um, an amount, a separate amount from your personal property that we will pay for. Okay? Silverware. Silverware is one, which I call wedding present stuff. So with guns, on the nationwide homeowner's policy, guns, we will cover up to $1,000 just on the, 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 the nationwide insurance policy. I'm going to guess that that amount is probably close to that, no matter who you have your insurance with. Alpha, State Farm, Allstate, Travelers, you name it, it's probably going to be around $1,000. Here's the thing. You can increase that coverage with Nationwide up to $5,000. Here's the problem. A deductible applies. So if I get my Glock 43 stolen, which I paid give or take $500 for, I'm not going to meet that deductible. So how do you fix that? What do you do? Well, I'm going to tell you what you do. You put your guns on what we call an inland marine policy, okay? Some, some companies, I know State Farm calls it a uh, personal art articles policy. You give them, what I always do, I take a picture of the gun, I give the serial number, uh, I do all of that, I have a bill of sale. And I, and I give that and I put that on a uh, inland marine or personal articles policy. That way, if I ever have a claim and my gun gets stolen out of my truck, I don't have to file it on my homeowner's insurance. In fact, I can't because I've got a deductible. My gun's not worth $1,000. So uh, I highly encourage each of you out there, if you're watching this today and you have 
a gun or multiple guns that you own, put that on an inland marine policy. And most inland marine policies, uh, we don't usually even put a deductible on an inland marine policy. So if it gets stolen, you literally just report the gun stolen and, 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 and we go about it that way rather than doing it through homeowner's insurance. Okay. So that's my answer to that question. So do you require that, a police report? We, in order we to report the stuff. The they stuff? do ask. They do. They typically do ask for a okay. police report. Yes. Yes. So they the do. first thing your gun gets stolen, call your local law enforcement. Law, yep. Get it reported. Exactly. And uh, Scott touched on something very important. If you can photograph your weapons or, or all your guns, your, your pistols, your your rifles, your shotguns, everything, and record the serial numbers, keep those in two separate places, put them on a the thumb drive, or whatever the case may be. Yep. It makes it a whole lot easier to for us to get it entered into the National Crime Information Center and for your insurance agent to uh, to cover it. Cover it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's my that's my answer to that question. Now, in terms of here's here's my other here's my other conundrum that I have. So the other question I had was, you know, if I shoot an intruder coming in my door, if I shoot somebody on the other end of my door in the middle of the night, is my homeowner's liability going to cover that? And that is a tough, tough question to answer. Um, I would say that would have to be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. I think it would depend on the circumstances. And I would feel much more comfortable having that discussion in one of our next uh, probably two or three episodes. We're going to have a personal injury attorney here with us and we're going to discuss that we're going to talk about that and and maybe they can shed some more light on that so uh, that would be my answer to that that's a tough question to answer um next question if you got one deborah from aniston ask does my homeowner's policy cover my guns if they get stolen I, i've already answered that right. so that's that yeah uh, again you you have uh with your homeowner's policy special limits of liability for guns and if you don't have a bunch of guns that get stolen and you don't meet your deductible then it's not going to be worth it to file a claim and i know that's not what a lot of people want to hear i will tell you if you get your gun stolen out of your vehicle to my knowledge there's there's no coverage athena help me out there's no coverage in the auto policy for, no. for for a gun for property as far as you're going to have to go towards that homeowners or hopefully that inland marine or personal articles policy i know state farm Correct. calls it a personal articles policy you're going to have to go that direction to get that gun covered um rather than trying to get it covered unless it's a super expensive gun a three or four thousand dollar gun you got a bill of sale and, and then you would get a thousand you know that thousand dollar limit out of that but then you're going to have a theft claim on your homeowner's record. So then what happens? Well, the company that you have your homeowner's insurance with is going to surcharge you at the next renewal date anywhere from 10 to possibly as high as 40% for that theft claim. Guys, let me pull the curtain back for you for a second, okay? Insurance companies do not like theft claims. The reason they don't like theft claims is because there is so much fraud associated with theft claims and typically theft claims have a higher degree of surcharge at renewal so again another great reason to have a personal articles policy or an inland marine policy uh, insurance carriers do not like theft claims I can promise you so uh, if you got a gun or multiple guns or a bunch of guns and, and, and you, you really need to have it on, on an inland marine or, or personal articles policy so um, I think that's about it. I'm trying to think if there's we anything have, else. We have one more question. Um, on. David asks, if my gun gets stolen, I report it stolen, and then it is used in a crime where someone is shot, do I still have any liability for that? That is a fantastic question. And that is a question I honestly cannot answer. Um, that is going to be litigated by attorneys in front of judges, and that's... Uh, there, there's no clear answer on that. You could be, you may not be. Yeah. David's personal uh, injury attorney will be with us in the next few weeks. I am going to write that question down, and that will be the very first question that we ask her 
live on air is we will talk about that. And um, I don't know the answer to that either. I'm not an attorney, although I come from a family of attorneys. They could probably all answer that in about two seconds. But um, we, will, we will discuss that in a future episode. Stay tuned. I just don't want to tell you the wrong thing. I think, once again, what we're going to find out, Mike, is that's going to be on a case-by-case basis. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. I think, I think that's what you're going to find out. No clear answer. Yeah. Right yeah. So. Um, ladies? Any other questions for us, or would y'all like for us to talk about anything else while we're on the air? I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you being here. I, I, I really do. Again, the purpose of this, I want to provide value to those people out there watching. I want them to, I, I want to discuss topics each week that are things that I, I want to know more about. And I think if I want to know more about them, because I'm just like these people out here, I know they want to know more about them. And so whether it's, um, you know, uh, talking about guns and insurance and concealed carry or whether it's talking about, uh, you know, m motivation in business or, or whatever the topic may be or a, a former Alabama quarterback that maybe is doing something else now and, and, and we just want to talk about what's happened since football, whatever it is, we're going we're gonna to talk about it, we're going to get to it, and we're going to try to tie it into insurance somehow, some way. So... That's what we're here for. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. It means a lot. I really appreciate it. Thursday, next Thursday, 2 o'clock, ask the insurance guy online. I can promise you it's going to be compelling. I'm going to try to have a superstar guest with us every week. And again, Officer McWhorter. You got one today. Well, actually, no, I got two. And I'm not sure you're more of a superstar than that one. But, but uh, yeah, you're right. I do have that one as well. Um, thank you, thank you again so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Respect, respect, respect. Thank you guys for watching. This is Scott Howell, Scott Howell and Associates, Nationwide Insurance, the insuranceguyonline.com, Nationwide is on your side. <laughs> Yay! For stop. I love you. Thank you so <laughs> yeah, much for doing absolutely. that. Thank you. I thank like you.